Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. And since I'm not training this week, I figured it'd be a great opportunity to highlight another YouTuber. And the person I wanna show you guys today is Bryce Lewis. Now, Bryce actually runs a website called The Strength Athlete and offers coaching services. So for example, if you follow Chelsea Lifts, she's being coached by him currently, but he's also a very accomplished both bodybuilder and power lifter. So for instance, he's been able to bench over 400 pounds, squat over 600 and deadlift over 700. So it's very impressive. And he's someone that I've really been following for quite a while. And one of the ways I first got turned on to Bryce is the fact that he puts up some really great mobility videos. And I've actually used a lot of his stuff in my own routines and getting more limber and really helping me with some of my lifts. So I reached out to Bryce and asked if he'd do something similar for my channel and he agreed to do so. So what you're about to see is a video from Bryce about squat mobility and it's definitely something that I can still apply to myself today. And I think you guys can get a lot out of it. So check out the video, check out Bryce's channel as well. It'll be linked in the description box below. And in the meantime, stay big. What's up guys, uh, we're talking about how to get good squat mechanics or what's important for good squat mechanics and a few mobility pieces to help you get there. I'll be focusing on the lower body today. Um, what I really want to take a look at is what needs to happen at the knees, the hips, and the ankles in order to get a good squat position. So, um, first, let's talk about what's important in a good squat position. What does the bottom look like? That's when mobility demands are the highest. Obviously, we don't have to do mobility demands when we're at the top of the squat position. Mobility demands are the most severe when we're at the bottom. So, let's say I take a typical squat stance here, dropping down. What I've got is a demand on my feet and ankles because I need to have some forward flexion here. Demand on my knees and being able to make sure that I have full range, at least in going so far as my knee being able to move front and back the way it should. And finally, demands on the hips. And the demands on my hips are twofold. I need to be able to get my knee out of the way and open my hips and also be able to get my knee upwards. So, if we take a look at the bottom of the squat, I want you to remember what the hip looks like here in relation to the knee. This is gonna help inform what kind of mobility work is gonna help out. We should be able to see that this position here is pretty close to the bottom of the squat position like we just saw. So that makes sense that a lot of lunge work is gonna help out with the bottom of the squat position. Lunge work here, beginning your hands on the inside, then variations, distractions outwards, distractions upwards or behind, or even classical lunge stretches are gonna help benefit this position. Now you can either have the knee directly above the ankle here, hands on the inside. If you can, try to get your elbow down on this side or on the other side, and work on pushing this knee outwards. That's gonna help kind of exaggerate that stretch. Second thing that's gonna help out is just camping out the bottom of the squat position. So, you're gonna set your feet parallel, even if you don't squat parallel, that's totally fine. Squatting your feet anywhere from zero to 30 degrees out is usually perfectly acceptable. But what we're looking to do is get yourself down in this position, take your elbows, and drive your knees out while keeping your feet planted. Why does this look familiar? This is the bottom of the squat. So if you can get comfortable in this position and keep your spine straight, working on maintaining that stable spine, stretching these hips open, you should be able to get a deeper squat, uh, deeper and more comfortable. So a combination of these two things, we should be able to test and find out how are we doing. So after spending some time in a deep lunge and a deep squat like that, get under the bar and see if you can hold the bottom of the squat if you do well. So we'll set ourselves up, deep squat, just find out how comfortable this position is. From here, are you finding stress in the hips? Are you finding that you can't get your heels on the ground? Are you finding stability in the back this week? Just staying in the bottom of the squat position with a reasonable amount of weight on the bar, obviously nowhere close to your one rep max, but just something slightly heavy, it's gonna help you address your weaknesses and figure out exactly where you're struggling. So, Again, we have demands in the hip and being able to externally rotate. We can address that by lunge variations. Most of the time, hamstring mobility is not a big factor, although it could play a factor, and we have ankle mobility as well. I highly suggest some type of weightlifting shoe with an elevated heel for exactly that purpose. It helps limit the amount of ankle mobility that you actually need. And again, you want to be slightly more mobile than you'll actually need. 
So, combination of these few things are going to be the first start to help address that possible position for where you're uh, having trouble. What we're going to do now is look from the side of the same squat. And obviously you don't have to squat like me. You can be a low bar, wide stance squatter. Your bottom position is obviously not going to be rock bottom. Um, it's going to be closer to passing just below parallel because the demands on the hip uh, for mobility are a little bit sharper that way. So first we'll take a look at the demands in the low bar, wide stance squat and see what the bottom position there looks like. We'll set up in a low bar squat here. Get the feet out a little bit wider. And note that the um, knee to the ankle segment stays a lot more vertical as we sit back a little bit more. The bottom position still takes the same, if not more, demand on the hip in terms of getting the upwards and outwards, and that's really important. So, if we're able to do that, I'm going to set up one more mobility stretch. All we're going to be doing is parking the foot up on something slightly lower than waist high, and try to push that knee out and end up forward. So this is just a classic stretch for the glute IT band tie-in here. Just trying to fold up over this leg. And the goal here isn't really to get your chest down on the ground, it's just to get slightly more mobile than you need. We're not looking for gymnast quality mobility here. We're just looking to make sure that you can achieve a full depth, pain-free squat. So, about two minutes per side. We can work different angles here. We can keep the foot up, grab the table, pull down in different directions, or we can collapse on the side of the foot, bend forward, bend off to the side, and find those spots where you're effectively tight. <laughs> 